Oh, my 4S JB parallel charging board. We've had some good times, haven't we? You know, when we first met, all I had were 4S batteries with XT60s on them. I could charge 10 of them at a time on you. And then she came along. And I had a bunch of 6S batteries too. And we had some good times. But times change and relationships come to an end. And sometimes you just want to get a little freaky with everybody that comes along. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. <laughs> This right here is the newest JB Signature Line Parallel Charging Board made in partnership with Ready Made RC's house brand, which is Strix. And I want to tell you why I think this is the parallel charge board that you should use today. There's another one out there that I have to acknowledge and compare against, but we'll get to that later in the video. First, I want to go back in time to... This has to have been like... 2018 maybe, maybe 2017, when I went to the New York City Drone Film Festival and Ready Made RC had a booth there and I got to talking to them and I said, you know, parallel charge boards always have balance plugs for 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, 6S and it takes up so much space on the board. How many people really have all those batteries? Everybody's just got a bunch of 4S batteries. I told you this was a long time ago. And I said, what if we made a parallel charge board that only had 4S balance plugs? And as a result, we could get 10 freaking batteries on there instead of the four or maybe six that most parallel charge boards had. And we built it. And it has poly fuses to help protect against uh, 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 short circuits and o overcurrent mismatched voltages and it has fuses and has a battery checker and it was pretty freaking good but as the intro suggested times have changed pretty much everybody these days well first of all most people are running 6s but a lot of people have a whole bunch of micro quads with little 4s or 3s or maybe 2s batteries with xc30s on them and they said can't you make a parallel charge board that does it all? And that's what this is. Let's have it right side up. That's what this is. This is the Strix JB Parallel Charge Board. What is a parallel charge board anyway? I've got videos about what parallel charging is and most importantly, how to do it safely. These are actually some of the very first videos I made for my channel. I've been passionate about parallel charging for a long time because parallel charging lets you Let's say you've got a 500 watt charger. Well, when you charge one of these batteries, you can't charge it at 500 watts. It would explode. But if you take a bunch of these batteries, five or 10 of them at a time, put them in a parallel charge board, you, they act like one great big battery and you can, in fact, charge them all at one time and they don't explode and make the most of your charger. So parallel charging is a way of charging your batteries quicker and getting the most out of your charger. Links in the video description to the battery to the videos about what parallel charging is and how to do it safely because there are some big risks with it if you don't do it safely. But for now, let's take a look at this board and talk about why I think it might be the best board for you to have today. So first of all, it has only one, two, three, four, five, six outputs, unlike the uh, uh, older JB boards, which have 10. So in that sense, it's less, but in many other senses, it's a whole lot more. As you can see here, it has an XT60 and an XT30 for all of its connectors. So you're not going to have to have two separate boards, one for your XT30s, one for your XT60s, or have a bunch of adapters. The balance plugs are also this custom mold that ReadyMade RC got made, which allow you to plug in any balance plug from 2S all the way up to 6S. And this is something that I really hesitated on because one of the ways that you can screw up parallel charging and explode your batteries and potentially light your house on fire is to plug 
batteries of different voltages together. And the simplest way to do that by accident is to mix up a 4S and a, 5, and a 6S, and then bad things happen. And so my original argument was that by making your parallel charge board have only one balance connector, it made it harder for you to accidentally mix up voltages. And that's true. But a whole lot of people just sort of cut these away. They would buy the 6S board and they'd cut the little plastic tab away and then they just do it they just do it anyway. So if you're the kind of person who wants to take that risk, uh, you know, it's like the parent says, if you're going to drink, I want you to do it safely. So drink from my liquor cabinet. <laughs> Metaphorically. <laughs> the idea behind these is that it makes it harder to accidentally plug in wrong, although you still can. The balance plug has this little tabs, right? And you can see we've got this little thick one here. So they're all going to plug in sort of down the side like so. And whatever you plug in, see here's a 6S. Hold on. Let get this rubber band off here. If we got a 6S, oh, I don't want to mix a 4S and a 6S, do I? Let's unplug that other one real quick before I plug this one in. See, I almost did it. Let's plug this 6S in, and you can see the 6S just plugs in like that. So it'll take anything from a 2S up to a 6S. Now, like my other boards, this board also has polyfuses on it. And polyfuses are electronic devices that help protect against overcurrent situations, which is one of the ways that parallel charging can go wrong. Um, unlike the other boards, we've mounted the polyfuses all on the top of the board. So no matter which polyfuse is getting tripped, you can see that it's happening. Some of the other ones had some of the polyfuses mounted on the underside where you couldn't see them. They were still protecting you, but you might not know you had a problem. How can you know you have a problem? Well, when polyfuses trip, they get super hot. But I don't know about you, but I don't see an infrared, so that's not obvious. Um, we've got a color-changing paint on here, and they turn red when they trip. I'll demonstrate that for you now. And in order to demonstrate this, I'll go ahead and plug that 6S back in, and then I will get these tweezers, and I will just short-circuit some of these pins and make some sparks, and we'll see what happens. I always feel super nervous about this, even though I know that the polyfuses are going to protect me. Lapo's slightly terrify me, and they should slightly terrify you. Just slightly. Bingo. You see those polyfuses turn red? There wasn't even a spark. Beautiful. That's exactly what should happen. If those polyfuses hadn't been there, we would have, at the very least, probably damaged the traces on the board and maybe damaged our battery or, or worse. But the polyfuses protect you. Now, don't rely on those polyfuses on a day-to-day -day basis because they do wear out over time. And eventually what will happen is you'll find that this board, your, your charger will like stop balancing the cells properly when you use it with this board. And then it's time to retire it and throw it out. That's just a fact of life with polyfuses. Now that should take a few years but you do want to be aware, aware that it will eventually happen. Uh, the more you trip those polyfuses, the more it's going to happen. Now, over here on the main discharge lead, we don't have polyfuses because like a 15 amp polyfuse would be, would be, I don't know if that even exists. If it does exist, it's pretty honking big. Instead, we've got these little automotive fuses and these are blade fuses. They, they are replaceable. On some boards that you'll see, they're actually soldered on and you have to desolder and replace them. You can get these at any auto parts store. One of the problems that this board addresses though is how do you know if this is tripped? And what we've done is, because you could burn out one of these fuses, the battery is not being charged and you don't know. Well, it, it kind of will charge, but it's not good. Um, so what we've done is we have installed these LEDs and if the fuse trips, then when you are charging, the LED will light up and that indicates that this fuse has tripped and needs to be replaced. It's a pretty cool feature. I didn't even ask for that. They just did that spontaneously and I'm super impressed with it. Those LEDs will also light up anytime you've plugged in two batteries with an excessively different voltage, uh, uh, voltage level. Um, eventually, obviously, if they have an excessively different voltage level, it'll trip the fuse and then current will stop flowing. But 
that you could get into a situation where maybe one battery is at like 4.2 volts and one battery is at like 3.8 volts and it's not quite enough current to trip the fuse but it's still not good for the battery. Anytime you see any of these lights light up, it basically means unplug all the batteries and check the fuses. Something's gone wrong. The voltage checker was one of the things people didn't like about the old boards. The voltage checker on the old boards would power up as soon as you plugged in a cell. There are two problems with this. Number one, if you left your batteries plugged into the board like for two days, that voltage checker would eventually suck down cell one, which is what it's running off of, and kill it, kill cell one. Now, you should never leave your batteries plugged into a parallel charge board unattended period, and you should definitely not leave them plugged in overnight. Uh, one of the problems with parallel charging is that when batteries are plugged in in parallel, if one of them has a bad cell that fails, it will kill all the others. You don't want that. So you shouldn't leave them plugged in anyway, but if you do, it's kind of stupid that it killed your battery. So what we've done with the new board is the voltage checker is not powered off the main plugs. Instead, it is a separate plug, and you plug one battery at a time into the voltage checker to see what its voltage is. Oh, I got it upside down, sorry about that. You plug one battery in at a time to check the voltage just of that battery, and then, okay, we're good to go, then you plug it into the rest of the board. The advantage of that is that it lets you check a battery just before you add it to the parallel board. So I check this one, it's at 4.2 volts, I plug it in. I check the next one, it's at 4.2 volts, I plug it in, and so on. And it doesn't kill your batteries if you leave it unplugged overnight, which you shouldn't do. Finally, if you're really committed to parallel charging, there's a daisy chain connector here at the bottom. Uh, it comes with a banana plug adapter that lets you plug in here, or if your charger has banana plugs, and a balance plug down here, and you can just daisy chain well. I mean, as, in theory, you could daisy chain as many as you want, although you'll get a little bit of voltage drop for each one, so you probably wouldn't want to go more than maybe two or three, uh, but it certainly is an option. So that brings us to the end of the video, and as always, the question, should you buy it? And don't let you think, just because I've got my name on this product, that I'm going to be just like, yes, it's amazing, everyone should buy it. I have to acknowledge that there are Lots of less expensive parallel boards out there, but I think that this one is pretty compelling given its safety features. If you want to buy a $15 parallel charge board with no overcurrent protection, cross your fingers and hope you never plug it in wrong, but you certainly have the option to do that. The ones that I really think are the competition for this are the Lumineer Paraguard series. The Lumineer Paraguard series has many of the features that this board does, including the ability to support multiple voltages. They have similar balance plug connectors, including polyfuses on all the balance plugs, including LED indicators when you've got a blown fuse. But the Lumineer Paraguard, I think, I think this board beats it in a couple of ways. One is that the Paraguard is about $32 and it comes only in an XT30 or an XT60, whereas this one is uh, closer to $40 and has both in one. And I think most people these days have a mixture. So to get equivalent functionality out of the Paraguard, you'd need to buy two and it would cost you a little over $60, $65. The other one that has to be mentioned is the Lumineer Paraguard Pro, which is like, this thing is freaking $70. It's got a metal case. It's got an amp readout for each of the freaking XT60s. It's got electronic overcurrent. It's practically a charger in itself. And at a price of $70, it damn well ought to be. That one, frankly, probably deserves a review of its own because it's just so feature packed. But at a price of $70, it's almost twice as much as this one. And it only has six outputs. So it's not really giving you any additional ability to charge batteries. It's just got freaking USB ports on it to freaking USB outputs. Sure, why not? Um, so. If you want, if in the interest of fairness, I have to say you should definitely check out the Luminaire Paraguard Pro if you're willing to spend 70 bucks on like a super top of the line parallel charge board. But obviously, I wouldn't be putting this out there if I didn't think this was a pretty good value at a price of about 40 bucks. Uh, it can really speed up your charging. Links in the video description to the product. Uh, and uh, you can get this at ReadyMade RC, obviously, and there are a few other stores that are also carrying it. Uh, if you want to try to shop there, the links will all be down below.
Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.